talking about the cranial nerves first of all we will discuss about that what are the exact points with the central nervous system where cranial nerves are attached with so cranial nerves attachment or attachment of attachment of cranial nerves with central nervous system now first of all we will talk about first of all we will talk about olfactory nerves factory nerves we will just talk about exactly where they are attached with the central nervous system now let's suppose this is your central nervous system you know here the inter interior cranial fossa and in the interior cranial fossa exactly at this point there are cribriform plate and in the cribriform plate under that there is no what really happens that just above the cribriform plate here there is olfactory bulb here there is olfactory bulb you have to remember olfactory bulb is not a cranial nerve it is not uh, olfactory nerve basically olfactory nerves are attached with the olfactory bulb let's suppose if i enlarge this area this is cribriform plate here is olfactory bulb right Green, olfactory nerves are consisting of bipolar cells which have peripheral processes and which have central processes and these central processes bundle together these central processes bundle together and they are making olfactory nerves right now olfactory nerves you can say are extending from the nasal mucosa rather olfactory nasal mucosa which is present at the uppermost part of the nose nasal cavity and from there it bundles of the fibers pass through the bundle of the bundle of the fibers pass through the holes of the cribriform plate and then they are going to the olfactory bulb now if someone asks you with the central nervous system where exactly these olfactory nerves are attached you must say they are attached with the prosen cephalon which or forebrain then which part of the prosen cephalon you must say telen cephalon then which part of the telen cephalon actually from the telen cephalon there are elongations out which are called olfactory bulbs and in the olfactory bulb there are mitral cells there are mitral cells these are going to bind with the mitral cells and from the mitral cell processes are going centrally and these central process are and some other cell central processes are making olfactory bulb and olfactory bulb go to yes what is this part olfactory track olfactory bulb converge into olfactory track and olfactory track will further go and divide into this is olfactory track into olfactory stria and olfactory stria basically three again olfactory nerves are connected with the olfactory bulb right olfactory bulb is a prolongation of telen cephalon and olfactory bulb as it moves backward it converts into a relatively narrow area which is called olfactory track, track. track. now olfactory track will convert into olfactory yeah. stria out of this these olfactory stria are connected to the central nervous system or you can say these olfactory stria are connected with the 
look here, a very important point, especially the lateral olfactory stria, this goes and this is connected with the temporal lobe. This lateral olfactory stria is going and attacked with the temporal lobe, especially that part of the temporal lobe which is concerned with olfaction, that part of the temporal lobe which is concerned with olfaction. Is that right? Now, this is also called piriform cortex. This is also called piriform cortex. This is very primitive cortex which is present over the uncus, right? Actually, this is inframedial, inframedial area of the temporal lobe where olfactory stria, especially lateral olfactory stria is attached, right? So today onward, if someone asks you, the how many olfactory nerves, you must say they are about 15 to 20 pairs, right? And where the olfactory nerves are attached with the central nervous system, answer is olfactory nerves are attached with the olfactory bulb, is that right? And then olfactory bulb will convert into olfactory tract, and olfactory tract into stria, and olfactory stria will eventually get connected with the olfactory cortex or primary olfactory cortex. So this was the attachment of olfactory nerves. The answer should be which part of the, with which part of the brain they are attached with the telon cephalon. Now we go to the second cranial nerve. Everyone knows that second cranial nerve is optic nerve. Second cranial nerve is optic nerve. The second point which you must know that optic nerve is not a true peripheral nerve. This is a misnomer. Embryologically, optic nerve is a elongation of, optic nerve is an elongation of diencephalon. We must be knowing that optic nerves extend from the back of the eyeballs up to the chiasma, right? Optic nerves start from the back of the eyeball, right? And they're carrying the fibers centrally to the optic chiasma. From the optic chiasma, let's suppose here is midbrain. let the midbrain face towards you so that you can visualize it better. Here is midbrain and you must be knowing under this there is pons and then there is medulla and of course all of you know what should be behind it. Now, I hope you understand this structure very clearly that brain, midbrain, pons, medulla and these three uh, basically mean brain stem, right? Now, just uh, at these parts, what is this? Yes, there are thalami which are placed above the midbrain, right? And on the lateral side of the thalami, here is lateral geniculate body. And in the same way, there is a lateral geniculate body on this side as well. Now, what really happens that optic nerves are interiorly connected with the cribriform plate or with the posterior aspect 
lamina cribrosa, not cribriform plate, we call it lamina cribrosa of the back of the eyeball, uh, right? And this is the porous area from where lot of neuronal bundles are entering from the retina towards the optic nerve, right? From here, they are going to be connected Now you see what really happens. The optic nerve starts from here, they reach up to chiasma. So this is the optic nerve up to this. Behind there is the chiasma and from the chiasma they are optic, yes please, optic track and here is also optic track, here is optic chiasma, here is optic nerves. And you must be knowing from the lateral geniculate body, right most of the fibers are going back to the visual cortex as optic radiation we'll discuss in detail later on right going to optic radiation now the point which i want to highlight if someone asks you that from where the visual system is developed you can say, look here, this thalami and, attention please, this thalami and lateral geniculate bodies, all the system is basically diencephalon. All the system is diencephalon. Optic uh, system is basically prolongations uh, of the diencephalon. And this is diencephalon which makes the optic nerves and even the retina. Retina is also a derivative of diencephalon. Due to this reason, optic nerves are true, not true peripheral nerves. Optic nerves are not true peripheral nerves. They are, functionally speaking or histologically speaking, they are central tracts. They are central tracts. Now, what are the evidence says that optic nerve is not a peripheral nerve? One answer is that peripheral nerves, axons are lined by the Schwann cells and central bundles of axons are line myelinated by oligodendroglia. Now, the fibers which are present in optic nerves, they are not lined by the Schwann cells, rather they are myelinated with the help of oligodendroglia. So this is one reason they should be considered central track. Secondly, optic nerves are not affected by the disease which purely affect peripheral nerves, but optic nerves are definitely affected by diseases which affect purely central tract like multiple sclerosis, like multiple sclerosis, right? One more. Now, let us go to the very basic question which we are talking today that where optic nerve is attached with the central nervous system, answer should be optic nerve itself is central nervous system. It's a part of central nervous system. Anatomically speaking, this part which is so called optic nerve extends from the back of the eyeball up to the chiasma. It extends from the posterior aspect of the eyeball up to the chiasma, right? Now we we'll go to the third nerve and we'll see where in the central nervous system it is exactly attached. But before we go for the third nerve, we can say that first nerve and second nerve, they are attached with the four brain. First nerves, olfactory nerves, they, were, they are attached with the telencephalon. Olfactory nerves are attached with telencephalon and optic nerves are attached with dian. Cephalon. They are attached with diencephalon. After that, we come to third cranial nerve, right? That is oculo, oculomotor nerves. There are two oculomotor nerves, one on the right side and that on the left side. Now let's see where exactly with the, in the central nervous system oculomotor nerve is attached. 
will make a brain stem from the front because the rest of the cranial nerves are attached with brain stem. This is the frontal view. the brain stem and let's draw the side view of the brain stem as well. Now, this is the side view person is facing in this way, midbrain, pons, medulla. And in this diagram, it's a frontal view. Person is facing towards you. Here it is midbrain, then there is pons and medulla. Now we have to see exactly what are the points where the cranial nerves are attached. Because if you know exact points where the cranial nerves are attached, then you know that if particular cranial nerve is injured at the point of exit from brain stem, exactly where the lien may be, right? For example, when we talk about third cranial nerve, of course, here is what? What is this? Cerebral aqueduct, and there is periaqueductal gray matter. Here is your, yes, what is it? Substantia nigra. Okay, here is red nucleus right now this is upper part of the midbrain upper part of midbrain mean if you look at the midbrain from the back it is superior colliculus and then there is inferior colliculus right actually third nerve the two third nerves their nuclei are present on the side of periaqueductal gray matter and the fibers move forward and they exit from the medial side. Now look, these are third nerves, they're moving forward. Or uh, here if we draw, third nerve is basically here and it's moving forward and then it is now. In this aspect, we see the third nerve fibers, they move forward, they pass through structure of the midbrain, for example, red nucleus, or they are a substantia nigra, or they pass through the cerebral peduncles, and then they move medially, right? Now, in the medially, they exit on the medial side of cerebral peduncles. These are called cerebral peduncle. This is right cerebral peduncle. This is left cerebral peduncle, because these are masses of gray matter which connect the brain stem with the cerebral hemisphere. Now, this is the lateral side of cerebral peduncle and here is medial side of the cerebral peduncle. So we can say that oculomotor nerve exit on the medial side of the cerebral peduncle. Now, the space which is in between these two cerebral peduncles, okay, let me highlight it. Space which is present in between the two cerebral peduncles, this particular space, It is CSF filled area, right? This area is called interpeduncular fossa. It is called, yes, interpeduncular fossa, right? When we say this is interpeduncular fossa, it means that basically third nerve is emerging out of the central nervous system from the interpeduncular fossa. Is it clear? So next time if someone asks you, where exactly to the central nervous system third nerve is attached? You must say third nerve is attached with the interior aspect of the midbrain at the level of superior colliculus, right? Just anteromedial part of the 
cerebral peduncles and they exit out into interpeduncular fossa, right? From here, third nerves naturally are moving forward. All of you know they are concerned with the muscles of the extraocular muscles, not all, right? And one more thing that along with this, okay, I will do just attachments now. Later on, I will tell you what are different types of fibers which are contained in a particular nerve and what are their starting point, what are the nuclei from where a particular cranial nerve is collecting the fibers and what are the final destinations. Again, let me repeat it. When we are talking about cranial nerves, first we are talking about that right now we are only just one point we are focusing on where they attach to the brain stem, right? After this discussion, we will go to what are the different nuclei in the brain stem to which the, from where the cranial nerves are collecting the fibers, right? Now, after this basic thing, now we go to the attachment of the fourth nerve. The fourth cranial nerve is, yes please, trochlear nerve. Fourth cranial nerve is trochlear nerve. Now, trochlear nerve has its nucleus right inferior to the third nerve nuclei, but within the midbrain. And within the midbrain, within the midbrain, trochlear nerve nuclear system is present at the level of inferior colliculi. Because they are present at the level of inferior colliculi, this is a very unusual nerve that its fibers will move backward. This is the only nerve which emerges on the back of the central nervous system. And this was third nerve and here is fourth nerve. So what we really see that fourth nerve, okay, it means it will emerge on the sides of the brain and it is coming to the front from the back, right? To exactly see how the fourth nerve come out and moves, let's view the brain stem from the back. Now we are going to view midbrain from the post postural lateral aspect. And this view is at the inferior colliculus or superior colliculus? It must be at the inferior colliculus. Right? Now, actually, here is fourth nerve nucleus. Here is also fourth nerve nucleus. Fibers of this fourth nerve cross to the opposite side and fibers of this fourth nerve also cross to the opposite side. Now what we really see here, that fourth nerve is exiting from the posterior aspect of the midbrain, right? If we really make very my only posterior view, right, we can make the view like this. Right? This is the posterior aspect. Here is interior aspect. Here is fourth nerve nucleus and here is also fourth nerve nucleus. One thing which I want to highlight that what are the structures which are present here? What is this? Yes, please. Inferior colliculus, which is a very important group gray matter connected with the auditory system. We connected with the auditory system. Now, fourth nerve nucleus is present on this side as well as on this side, right? And they are moving like this and they are moving like that. And from here, of course, then they will turn forward entirely, right? Any question here? 
So what did we learn? The third and fourth nerve, they are attached with midbrain. Third nerve and the fourth, third nerve and the fourth nerve, they are attached with the midbrain. The third nerve exits from anterior aspect of the midbrain and fourth nerve exits from the posterior aspects of the midbrain. And third nerve exits from the anterior apex, uh, aspects of the midbrain within interpodungular fossa, right? And fourth nerve at the level of superior colliculus. And fourth nerve exits from the posterior aspect of the midbrain at the level of inferior colliculus. Is there any question here? There's no. Now we'll go to the next attachment, that is fifth cranial nerve. What's the name of the fifth cranial nerve? Yes, please. Trigeminal nerve. Fifth cranial nerve is? Trigeminal nerve. Right? Trigeminal nerve, exactly from which part of the, of the brain stem it exerts out. Actually, it is exiting out from the anterolateral part of the midpontine region, right? This is the, which nerve? Yes, please. Trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal nerve are two roots. There is one sensory root and other is? motor root, blue is the sensory root and red is the motor root and this blue root is going to, yes please, what is it? Trigeminal ganglion and remaining you must be knowing that if this is trigeminal ganglion, this is a sensory root which is connected to trigeminal ganglion anteriorly Posteriorly, it is connected to the pons, right, mid-pontine region. From here, it gives mainly three divisions. What is this? Ophthalmic, yes, ophthalmic division. Other is? Maxillary division. And third one is? Ophthalmic, maxillary Divian and third is mandibular divian. This is mandibular divian. And here I want to highlight a point that motor root, all fibers will go along the mandibular divian. None of them are going along the of thalamic division or maxillary division. Is that clear? So, third and fourth nerves are attached with the midbrain. Fifth nerve is attached with the midpontine region or anterolateral area from where it is exiting out as two roots. There is sensory root and there is motor root and the sensory root is connected entirely with the trigeminal ganglion which are three divisions of thalamic division, maxillary division, and mandibular division. And motor root, all the fibers go along the mandibular division. So this was exact point where the trigeminal nerve is attached, right? So we can see trigeminal nerve is, if you want to see interiorly now, from interior aspect, here is how trigeminal nerve is exiting out. the pons anterolateral area and what should be here yes trigeminal ganglion and from here there should be yes thalamic division maxillary division and mandibular division of thalamic division maxillary division and mandibular division and just with it, here is which root? Motor root, which is following the course along with mandibular division. 
Now we know exactly where the third nerve is attached, where the fourth nerve is attached, and exactly where the fifth nerve is attached. Now we have to look where exactly sixth, seventh, and eighth nerves are attached. Look here. This is ponto medullary junction. Or we can say here it is ponto medullary junction. And what is this uh, structure behind it? Posterior to it, cerebellum. And we can draw the cerebellum on the back of it. A structure like, yes, please. Is it clear? Now, we have to see the relationship that what are the exact point from where the sixth nerve exerts out. What is the name of the sixth nerve? Yes, please. Abducent nerve, which is also concerned with the movement of the eyeball. It innervates the lateral rectus, right? It abducts the eyeball. Now, where is exactly the sixth nerve is attached with the central nervous system? Actually, it exerts. Now, this area where pons and medulla are meeting and cerebellum is covering from the side, this area is called ponto cerebellar angle, right? Look, this point, right, these points are called ponto cerebral angle, is that right? Now, sixth nerve exerts exactly at this point. This is sixth nerve, right? This is exiting at this point. Just lateral to that, there is exit point for or attachment of seventh nerve. And more lateral to that, there is exit point for the eighth nerve. So sixth, seventh, and eighth, they are moving out at the junction of pons and middle and cerebellum, right? And six is exiting out from most anterior aspect and promedial side lateral to the sixth abducent, there is exit point of the seventh nerve. More lateral to that, there is exit point of the eighth nerve. Is that right? Now, in the lateral view, now we must show the same thing in the lateral view as well, right? So we can see it here. Which nerve is coming out from here? Sixth nerve. What should be here? Seventh nerve. And what should be here? It's nerve, right? So, you know, sixth is abducent nerve. Seventh is, yes, please, facial, facial nerve. And eighth is, yes, please, vestibulo, cochlear nerve. So, next time we can say, that 6th, 7th, 8th nerves, they are exiting from the brain stem at ponto medullary junction. Uh, and as you move from medial to lateral side, it converts into ponto cerebral angle, right? The medial one, most medial is 6th nerve. Lateral to that, what is exiting out? 7th nerve. And very laterally, what is coming out? 8th nerve. So, abducent, facial, and vestibulo cochlear nerve. Is that clear? So these are exact attachment up to the eighth nerve. Is there any question up to here? Oh, there is no question. Okay. Now we have to see attachment of the remaining four nerves which are with the medulla. Right? Remaining fourth nerve, how they are attached with the medulla. When we are talking about, okay, let me draw it again. Let's draw medulla a little bit larger so that we can see it more clearly. Now, this area, there are two swellings related with the medulla just on the side of the median 
this area is called pyramid right pyramid and on the sides of the pyramid there are olive and on the side of all these structures what is here yes cerebellum, cerebellum. is that right now this is olive what was the nerve here eighth nerve just below the eighth nerve and behind the olive you know this sulcus is called post olivary sulcus what is the name of this sulcus post olivary sulcus and this one between the pyramid and the olive this is called pre olivary sulcus right the same way we can draw here if this is olive present over here right so this must be yes pre olivary sulcus and here should be post olivary sulcus this is pre olivary sulcus and here it is post olivary sulcus right now pre olivary sulcus is anteromedial to the olive and post olivary sulcus is Postolateral to the olive. Now, what really happens? Ninth nerve, ninth nerve, right? Tenth nerve, and cranial part of eleventh nerve, right? Okay, let me change the color so that you can see it more clearly. is pre olivary sulcus and here you can say there is post olivary sulcus right now ninth nerve rootlets exert from this point right between the olive and the post olivary sulcus tenth nerve rootlets also exert just from the same sulcus but just inferior to the ninth nerve Ninth nerve is glossopharyngeal, tenth nerve is vagus, and then here is cranial part of eleventh nerve. Here it is, cranial part of eleventh nerve, and here there is exit of spinal part of eleventh nerve, and now here is eleventh. Which part? Spinal part of eleventh nerve. It, its rootlets make a bundle, which is moving upward through the foramen magnum, and it meets with the cranial part of eleventh nerve. Right now, and here is tenth nerve, and here is ninth nerve. Ninth, tenth, cranial part of eleventh, and spinal part of eleventh, eleventh. Cranial part and eleventh spinal part. Right. The point which I want to highlight that ninth nerve, tenth nerve, and eleventh nerve they are attached with the medulla just on the posterolateral aspect of yes, please posterolateral aspect of olive. Right. So we can say that these are basically in vertical line. Emerging in the post olivary sulcus, is that right? Now, if you want to really see in this diagram how these ninth, tenth, and eleventh are emerging, again, this is point which is post olivary sulcus, and here is the line which is post olivary sulcus. So, ninth nerve rootlets must be exiting something like this. And underneath, what should be there? Yes, please. Tenth nerve. And under that, there should be cranial part of eleventh nerve. Cranial part. And from here, yes, 
which nerve? Spinal part of 11th nerve going upward. In the same way, here also, okay, let's start from here. What is this nerve fibers, uh, rootlets coming out? Yes? Ninth. Ninth nerve. And just inferior to that, in the post library sulcus, which nerve rootlets are coming out? Tenth. Yes, tenth nerve. And just the same line, but under that, there are rootlets which are making which part? cranial part of 11th nerve and here these rootlets are making a bundle which is called 11th nerve spinal part 11th nerve is also called accessory nerve which is moving upward it moves with the 11th cranial part and then separates away right this is 11th which part spinal part is it clear one thing which, which I really want to highlight at, in this upper spinal segments, these are the interior roots, right? And here are these, yes, which roots? Posterior root. So we can see that what is happening that these 11th nerve spinal part fibers are exiting behind the anterior roots and in front of the posterior root right so it means they are exiting just in the lateral part and from there you can see spinal part accessory nerve fibers they unite together make a single bundle which moves upward through the foramen magnum and then they will go upward shake hand with the yes cranial part of 11th nerve and then they will separate towards their ultimate destination which we will discuss later on. Now we are left with one cranial nerve pair. Which one is the last one? 12th nerve. Right? And 12th, okay, first you write down the name. Name of the 9th nerve is? Yes, please. 9th nerve is? Glossopharyngeal nerve. And 10th nerve is? Yes, please. Vagus nerve and 11th nerve is accessory nerve. Right? With one, two parts, cranial part and spinal. spinal part. Now we are left with the last cranial nerve which is hypoglossal now, when we are talking about the hypoglossal nerve, the last cranial nerve or 12th cranial nerve, it emerges out at pre-olivary sulcus. Pre-olivary sulcus is between the pyramid and the olive. Pre-olivary sulcus is between the pyramid and the olive and this is attached exactly here. This is 12th cranial nerve rootlets coming out. And if you draw on the lateral side, they must be coming from this area. This is hypoglossal nerve or 12th nerve. So we, uh, so we have just done that what are the exact point where cranial nerves are attached when they exit out of the central nervous system. Just to brief it up, we discussed that olfactory nerves are basically attached with the central nervous system at the teal encephalon. Rather, we must say an elongation from the teal encephalon. What was that? Olfactory bulb. Then about the optic nerve, we said optic nerves are not true nerves. These are, this is not something like peripheral nerve. This is a misnomer. They are basically central tract and they are out pouching of diencephalon. Then third and fourth nerve, they are attached with the mesencephalon. They are attached with the mesencephalon or we can say the third and fourth nerve, they are attached with the midbrain. Third nerve is attached 
rostrally at the level of superior colliculus and fourth nerve is attached caudally at the level of inferior colliculus and uh, this nerve which is oculomotor nerve which is exiting at the level, upper level of midbrain it exits from interior aspects from interpeduncular fossa from interpeduncular fossa right interiorly from the midbrain trochlear nerve opposite to that exists from the posterior aspect of the midbrain then we were talking about fourth fifth these nerves fifth sixth seventh and eighth these nerves are attached with the palms these are attached with the palms now trigeminal nerve which has two roots sensory root and motor root this this is attached with the mid pontine area on anterolateral aspect of the palms right and uh, then we come to the attachment of 6 7th and 8th we have already discussed 6 7th and 8th they are coming out at ponto cerebral junction most medially there is exit of 6 after that there is laterally there is 7th and most laterally there is exit of vestibulo cochlear nerve right after that 9th 10th 11th and 12th last four cranial nerves they are attached with yes please they are attached with medulla right in case of medulla as i explained that there are pyramids present centrally and laterally there are olive right now between the pyramid and olive there is pre olivary sulcus and between the olive and the cerebellum there is post olivary sulcus more truly speaking between the olive and inferior cerebral peduncle because behind here there is inferior cerebral peduncle which is connected the connecting the medulla with the cerebellum now 9th 10th and 11th nerve the rootlets are emerging as in a vertical row in post olivary sulcus most rostral being the rootlets of the 9th after that the rootlets of the 10th and lower most are the rootlets of the cranial part of 11th when we are talking about the cranial part of 11th we should not forget that spinal part of the 11 is attached with the central nervous system with the upper spinal cord the uppermost segments of the spinal cord that 11th nerves spinal part the rootlets are coming out from the upper spinal segments between the anterior and posterior roots and after that they move upward right from the firm and magnum and they just for a very brief uh, you can say destiny, uh, distance they will move with the cranial part of the accessory nerve so spinal and spinal and cranial part will move together but after that cranial part will go along 10th and spinal part will be separated so you, we can say that cranial part of accessory nerve and spinal part of accessory nerve they briefly shake the hand with each other after that 11th cranial part will go with 10th and this will go separately to the cervical plexus is that clear and last nerve is hypoglossal nerve which is a major supply motor supply to the tongue right hypoglossal nerve basically emerges from the pre olivary sulcus and in the pre olivary sulcus the multiple rootlets from where the 12th nerve emerge between the pyramid and the olive right you can see also here here is pyramid here is olive and these red rootlets they are coming out between the pyramid and the olive is that right now once we are done with that where exactly cranial nerves are attached with the central nervous system now we are going to talk about that once cranial nerve exit from the central nervous system of course they are present in the cranial cavity from the cranial cavity through the different foramina they have to go out and reach to their destination tissues now we will talk about what are different foramina important foramina present in the cranial cavity and which nerve is exiting through which foramen